I made all of these D&D player handouts in about 15 minutes, and I made this map in like five minutes. This one took me a lot longer because I drew it all by hand, but if you can't tell, I've been really into making physical props and handouts to show my players during our role-playing game sessions because it's way easier than I thought if you don't draw a whole world map by hand. And it takes almost no time from start to finish. Also, because rather than using the classic arts and crafts method of tea staining the paper, I'm using a different liquid also found in your kitchen, so you don't even have to wait for tea to brew. Seriously, I was way out of practice when it comes to crafting, so if I can do this, you can too. And it just feels great to be creating these tangible artifacts for my game that I can't wait to share with my players, so I also wanted to share the process with you. Because I'm Bob, this is where we learn how to have more fun playing RPGs together, and step one is to make your map. In a minute, I'll go over some incredibly easy techniques for drawing your own dungeon maps or fantasy world maps, but the ultra easy way to do this, if you literally only have five minutes, is to just print off a black and white, ideally hand-drawn looking map from your favorite RPG cartographer. I grabbed this free design from the Dyson Logos blog, but there are a number of amazingly talented RPG cartographers out there making great stuff, like this video's sponsor, Burrowbound. The Burrowbound Patreon is the ultimate resource for immersive RPG cities, providing urban adventure modules with intriguing NPCs, new mechanics, captivating music, and of course, top-down battle maps in multiple variations. All of the key buildings in each city are mapped out, making them perfect for heists or killing rats in the basement. And all of these assets are compatible with Foundry BTT. I think it's great that the adventures are system neutral for use with D&D, Pathfinder, or similar games. So whatever you're playing, check out the Burrowbound Patreon through the link below. Now, we have our printed map, but I promise to show you some simple tools and techniques for drawing your own awesome map. So first, if you have only a bit of time on your hands, I recommend using Dungeon Scroll, which is a free-to-use browser-based mapping application pretty much designed for that old-school look. The default style is good for what we want, but you can always change the colors, the line weights, really everything is adjustable on Dungeon Scroll, and I made a video tutorial for this tool several years ago using the original version, which I'll link up in the corner. However, they have since made some changes, and now the user interface is slightly too minimal for my personal taste. Like there have been some times where I know there's an option to do a certain thing, but I can't find it. Maybe that's just me. Anyway, we've got a pretty solid mini dungeon map here. You get the idea. If you have more time on your hands, you can use them to draw your own map. Yes, even if you think you're no good at drawing, you can do this. Here's how. You get a blank sheet of paper. Grid paper helps if you have it, but whatever. I'll be using a fine point sharpie simply because it's on my desk. To start, you throw some dice down, you draw some lines around these dice, making some of them wiggly, some of them straight. Those are our dungeon rooms. Now we connect a few of them, draw some stairs and some doors, and we're basically done. You can draw everything in pencil first, but then you'll want to go over it with ink, and after the ink is totally dry, you can use any decent eraser, like a fresh pencil eraser, to remove the pencil lines if you feel like it. Also, if you want the same detailed look of that other map, you just make little diagonal hatch marks along the outside of each line. Three or four hatches one way, three or four hatches the other way. Repeat until you fill the whole thing up. And since this part requires zero brain power, you can meanwhile use your brain to think about What's the history of this dungeon? What lives here now? What treasure do they keep and where? And what kind of traps, puzzles, or other defenses do they use to protect that treasure from thieving adventurers? Please let me know down in the comments what other questions you like to ask yourself when preparing a dungeon or really any adventure for your game. To be honest, I usually ask and answer those questions before I start drawing, so the drawing can better match those answers but the order really doesn't matter because your players are unlikely to question whether or not the architecture of the dungeon matches its original purpose because they'll be too busy trying to sneak past trolls and bargaining with kobolds and all the weird stuff adventurers do in dungeons. Then alternatively, if you want to make your own world map, you draw hills like this, easy. You draw mountains like this, also easy. Whoa, a volcano. Every RPG map needs at least one volcano. Grasslands can look like this, super easy. Rivers are just two lines next to each other. Oh, maybe a little bridge going over it. Cool, 
Trees are little triangles packed together, or a cloud shape with little lines going straight down beneath it for the tree's trunks. You can even make cool chasms like this, or cool caves like this. Just a hill with a hole in it, which is also a great place for a dungeon. And then towers and castles and whatnot. Trust me, you can handle this. But if you need any more encouragement, go check out JP Kuvert's channel here on YouTube. He's an actual artist who can walk you through all these techniques with much more experience and style. Now, one way or another, you got your map and you can just as easily write out a letter or better yet, print off a letter that the player characters can find during their adventure. But for some help writing that letter or poem or riddle, you can try having ChatGPT write out the first draft for you. Let me know in the comments if you've been using ChatGPT for any parts of your game prep. I haven't personally, but I've heard it's great for tasks like this, where you just need it to spit out something that sounds okay, and then you can edit it, revise it, copy paste it into a Google Doc, slap on a cursive looking font, and print that sucker out. Now we're finally ready to age this stuff. Take your paper and carefully tear off those edges. I've found that my printer paper seems to have a grain to it where tearing on the long edge is usually very clean, but tearing on the short edge ends up more jagged. That's just a heads up because you might want to go a little slower on the short edge. The cool part is you can't mess this up because you should rip off a chunk of your dungeon map. Think about it. This is an in-world artifact drawn by some terrified dungeon delver, not a survey team. So you should even feel free to deviate from this map when playing the actual dungeon. Giving the party a complete and fully accurate map of the dungeon would kind of break the immersion this artifact is supposed to provide. Just be clear with your players up front that the map is not 100% reliable. Also, it's more fun if the map is in pieces and the characters find its different sections as they explore different areas of the dungeon. However you do it, be sure to make your tears at this stage before we add the color. Otherwise, your beautifully stained map might have a clean white edge where you tear it. For the same reason, if you want to crumple your paper to make it even more ragged, you should do that now, because after getting it wet and drying it, the paper will be much more brittle and prone to tearing where you don't want it to. That's how I got a hole through my world map, but it's kind of cool. And you can skip this step. I didn't crumple these handouts at all because I was really pressed for time, and I still think they came out great. Now, after tearing up your map or letter, you want to place the paper on any oven safe tray and add our secret ingredient, soy sauce. Believe me, I tried using tea, but it was just taking forever to get dark at all. So I just looked around my kitchen for other dark liquids. I tried balsamic vinegar. I tried mixing in coffee grounds. I even tried a little barbecue sauce, but soy sauce is cheap and has the exact color and consistency I was going for. So just splash some drops all around your paper, then even it out with a wide craft brush or a marinade brush like this one, and be kind of careful when brushing because the paper could tear at this stage since it's all wet, but you do want to cover the surface so it soaks pretty evenly. Pretty evenly because whenever you're designing something to look rustic, you don't want it to look too even. So whether it's tearing those edges or spreading your soy sauce around, be relaxed and don't stress over the details. Those quote unquote mistakes are just natural variations that will end up giving your artifact a more authentic look. Then, the main step is to cook that map. Man, that really sounds like a game show tagline. I put mine in the oven at 350 for like three minutes and it comes out fairly brittle, but with that nice, slightly charred edge. Just, it looks amazing. Finally, the very important last step is to carefully at first, but then adding some pressure, just massage the paper between your hands, kind of twisting them back and forth. You'll notice immediately that this loosens up the fibers of the paper, making it less brittle and more flexible again, but just do it very slowly. And after doing that for a minute or so, your paper will have the texture of almost like a very thin crinkly fabric, which to me makes it not only look, but now feel more authentic. And the next thing you know, you'll be wowing your players when you hand them these actual pieces of the game world, making the experience that much more real and encouraging them to explore. If that sounds fun to you, please remember to give this video a thumbs up and share it with your game group so they'll make some awesome stuff of their own. Then check out this video about making random tables for your dungeon or this one about Gygax's own world building techniques.
Thanks to the Bob World Builder patrons who support this channel directly and get cool stuff like a monthly 5e one-shot adventure and more, but thank you for your support and keep building.